All right, so a friend showed me this plugin and I wanted to try it out today. So here we are, let's try it out. So this plugin is the EQ Curve Analyzer. It's by Burdum Audio. I am not sure if I'm saying that correctly, so please forgive me if I've said the brand name incorrectly. Here is the URL for it. I'll link to it in the description below as well. So it's burdumaudio.com slash EQ dash curve dash analyzer dot html. So this plugin was shown to me by my friend Pablo. I'll link to his Instagram in the description below. He is an amazing engineer. He does content that's in Spanish language. So if you're looking for some good audio engineering Spanish language content, please go check him out. He also does some great content on Dolby Atmos, stuff like that. And he's a very talented engineer. So thank you so much to Pablo for showing me this plugin. It was really interesting. We were messing around with it in a Zoom a while back. So I'm gonna actually install this on my computer and try it out and kind of just experiment with it. And today is just going to be a super chill. Let's try a plugin out day. So here's the plugin. There is an AAX version, so I can easily use it in Pro Tools. And my understanding is you install the plugin, you instantiate an instance of the plugin on your track, then you instantiate an instance of the plugin that you want to test. So another plugin on your track. And then what you do is you add a second version of this plugin below the plugin that you're testing. And so it seems like there's essentially a send and receive version of the plugin, and it kind of tests how your, your plugin that you're actually testing is affecting the audio. Okay, and so this plugin should be compatible with my OS. It should be compatible with my silicon computer. I am, um, I'm actually still using things in Rosetta, so don't be mad at me, but let's try it out. So I'm gonna download the user guide and the Mac version for this. There's legacy versions too. And then I'm gonna just run the install. So let me open up my downloads and click on that file to run the install. So here's the installer. I'm just gonna go through this install everything so I can use it on other DAWs if I want to. I'm gonna close this. Okay, I'm gonna keep it because I like to keep my installers. I'm gonna reopen Pro Tools. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a new track and I'm going to put, no, actually, I don't wanna view comments here. I'm gonna get rid of comments. I'm gonna put a signal generator on this track here bypass that so it doesn't drive us crazy. I'm gonna put my headphones on. Now I'm gonna to try to open up this plugin here. So let's find the brand, add that. And then I guess I'm just assuming, I'm gonna see how user, how intuitive this is. Let me click on that, add that there. So now we have a before and after. I'm gonna shift click to open up both versions of it. So that's set as signal generator. Oh, so it's gonna generate signal for me. Hmm, so I might not need this signal generator. So let's see, signal impulse. Let's do noise, let's send some noise. And let me bring that down and let me actually add one of my plugins. So let's add, let's do an EQ to start. And there's some noise there. So let me decide what type of noise. No, let me get rid of this signal generator. So I wish there was set as generator. I don't know what that is, auto sync. Noise level, so I can raise the level. Okay, so I see it raising and lowering on my, just on my fab filter here. Let me bring it back to where it was. I think it was at 16. Let me shift click to open the end version here. And so it looks like the fab filter is not changing the signal significantly here. Huh, it's taking out my CPU usage. So I have a Mac Studio computer. I do get errors like this every so often. So let me actually get a playback engine here. I'm gonna set this higher is what I'm gonna do. So with buffer size, you wanna set it higher when you're mixing usually so it can handle the processing for the plugins and then to avoid latency, you reduce it when you're tracking. So high when you're mixing, low when you're tracking. So I'm gonna see if that helps. There we go, now it's being normal again. So let me actually, let me do something really extreme here. I'm just gonna put a low cut on here. There's my low cut and it's seeing it at, that looks like about, let's see, is this around 500? Oh, it keeps doing that, interesting. You might also need to have this track actually connected to an audio input. Oh, please enable track input monitoring. All right, I can do that. Let's enable input monitoring. It would have helped if I read this whole thing before deciding what to do, huh? So I put it in input monitoring. Let's see if it gives me that error again. 
So this is at 720 hertz is where it's kind of seeing it. And that's at negative. I was hovering on it. I could have seen it. 727 at negative 11.7 decibels. Let's see. Let's go to let's go to nine. It's easier. So like nine decibels, it should be at around 788. So at nine decibels, this is reading at 803 for the line, but for the actual signal, it's reading at 689. Okay, so that's pretty close. Let's see about another plugin. Let's put another plugin on here. So what Pablo is showing us is that some plugins are like way off from what they say they're doing. So we were actually looking at some EQ plugins. I think it was like the SSL, one of the SSL uh, emulations. And it was it, it was like hundreds of <laughs> hertz off in some instance. Some of the bands were like way off. So that was really interesting. Let me look at my EQ list here. Let's let's look at the Pultec actually. Which Pultec do I want to use? Is this one that I have? Let's check it out. Yeah, so here's a Pultec emulation. Let's see if we can get that Pultec look here. So it's boosting that low for me. 100 hertz versus 60 hertz. It does look like it's shifting over to the left a little when I switch to 60. And there it goes even further for 20 and 30. I almost never put it on 20 or 30, but maybe that's the style of music I'm working on. And there we go. There's that little, that cut there, but that's pretty high. Is it really that high? Maybe it is. I don't know. That's wild. I don't know why in my head it was like a little farther over. I'm just doing really extreme, <laughs> extreme, uh, extreme settings here. This goes pretty high. Can I set this value here? Let's make it 50. Yeah, I can. That's cool. Okay, so you can set the value. This is interesting. Let's do this side. Let's compare. I'm going to option click on these to return them to normal. Let's compare this pull tech. So, all right. So this is this pull tech at 100 and then cranked, cranked, right? It's this curve. Let's remember that curve. Let's try a different pull tech. I'm going to bypass this one. Back to normal. Awesome. Uh, let me search pull tech. Which one do I have? Hmm. This is what an EQP1A. So let's do EQP1A. Let's crank it. And it was at 100. So here's the Universal Audio EQP1A Pultec. Let me bypass that and let's look at this one. Here's Avid's. So that one, they look very similar. This one might be a little more subtle in the dip, is it? Let's see. Bypass. Uh, maybe it's about the same. No, I think it is a little more subtle. I just put my thumb up against it. Let's set this back down. Let's set it to 10. So now we can really see the difference. So bypass that one, bring that one in. So it's dipping. It's like right below 1K where it's really dipping and it has that depth and shape. Yeah. It is slightly different. So here, this is the universal audio one. And then the Avid one is a little more extreme, huh? Just a little bit. It's barely, because you see here it's like negative three, negative six. So this is by like a couple dB at the most. That's interesting. Let's try something else. Let's try a compressor that, where we can mess with the attack value here. So here... Let's make it so it's definitely compressing, right? So you can see that it's raising the level here. I have auto gain on. Let's turn off auto gain. So now it's just reducing, right? So I would have to raise the gain. Because right, when we use a compressor, we're taking usually what we're doing. We don't have to do it this way, but we're taking the loud stuff, we're bringing it down, and then we're bringing everything up. And that helps us bring up the detail for the quieter stuff without you know, uh, clipping and distorting on the loud stuff. It helps make everything feel louder, which is one of the reasons why people think that compressors just default make everything louder. Uh, we do tend to use them that way, but they don't have to, right? 
So here's our, our compressor. It's on some noise. Let's adjust this attack value and see how it changes things. So it's letting more through as I make the attack value slower. That makes sense. Although it is a steady sound. Let's try an impulse. That's too bad. I was hoping we would actually see as we adjust this attack value, you know, when you have a longer attack value, it lets more transients pop through because of that timing thing, right? So the initial hit, that initial transient snap kind of pops through more. So I was hoping we'd see a little bit more of that on the actual EQ curve. I was hoping we'd see as we raise this that we got like a little bit more of the high frequencies, for example, but it's not showing us that. And I don't know if maybe that has to do a little bit with, you know, what, what signal it's sending out through here. I'm not sure what it's using as the impulse. I assume it's kind of like um, what they use for impulse response work, which is where they are sending out full frequency noise just in a quick impulse. But yeah, what if I bypass this? Does this line get a little less bumpy looking? Yeah, it looks a little smoother when it's bypassed to me. That's such a subtle change, you're not going to really notice that. But it is interesting how it's a, a smoother line here versus when it's active. All right, well, that was a fun experiment. What else do we want to try? Let's try some kind of other emulation. Let's try comparing the two A. Ah, uh, interesting. Let's set this gain value to like exactly 40. There, it's at 40. Okay, and let's make this all the way flat. So let's compare this. Let me bypass this. Let's do the other two A that I have here. So here it is, what's this at? Let's set it to 40, as close to 40 as I can get it. I think that's at 40. And then what was this one? I'm gonna do shift and click on the other one to kind of view what it's at. What are you at? Let's make you at 50 exactly. There, there's 50. I think that's as close to 50 as possible. All right, so let's try, can we freeze this? Let's freeze it. Freeze. Okay. Now I go, ah, that's interesting. This one's set to, I'm looking for differences here. They're both set to gain reduction. In theory, that should just be the metering, right? This one's set to compress. This one's set to compress. So in theory, that should be the same. All right. So this is really interesting. I'm glad I'm doing this video because I'm learning a lot here. So when I go for this one, over this one, right? This is the UID one. This is the waves one. It's interesting to note, I've frozen this one, which is the UID one that's currently active. But if I bypass the UID one and activate the waves one, you'll notice even though the parameters are set the same as much as they can be, although I don't know what the setting for the UID is for the default for this guy. This is like mimicking the, the little turn screw that's on the back of the actual physical hardware units. Um, but, these are two very different curves. And this is in theory set to the same value. It's 40 gain and then 50 for peak reduction. And what I'm noticing is here on the gain reduction meter, right? This one's showing negative 10, whereas this one's showing negative, I don't know, four, 4.5, right? 4.2 maybe. So they're giving very different response despite basically having the same setting. So maybe if I bring, this is the one that's currently active. So maybe if I bring this flat knob down, this is the only thing I can think of that would really, you know, be changing it and making it so different from the UAD one. But no, it's not. It's making it much louder, which is interesting as I go back down here. And it does look like it's making this curve at the top more extreme once I go towards the flat here. And I actually have a video where I talk about this parameter here and what it means. So I'll just link to that in the description and not go over it here right now. But if you're curious about that, go check out that in the description. I'll try to put a card on the screen for it as well. So these are two very different responses. They're more different than I thought they would be. And it's interesting because in theory, they're modeled after the same hardware unit. Um, there are often variations between actual physical hardware units. So sometimes it's not really fair to be like, oh, this one's more true than that one. Like, for example, I think about 
all the plugins that are emulated after like the physical plate reverbs that had an actual metal plate in them, you know, and those could be very, you know, they were made to certain specs, but they could be very different, especially as time went on and as they were used differently and stored differently and worn differently and, you know, all that stuff over time, they, they develop different sounds, slightly different sounds. And so you might get a good amount of variation in terms of like what an audio file would consider to be a good amount of variation between two units. So then when you're making a plugin, depending on which one you you use as your source for your emulation, you might get a very different plugin in the end. But this is interesting to me because this looks like something that would be done to help get a competitive edge psychologically from people, you know, because people use these a lot on, for example, vocals. We love using them on vocals in the studio. And this curve looks like it's made to help vocals pop more. So it's interesting that like when I reach for this one over this one, there might be some kind of psychological thing going on because it's one louder, right? And people often think that the louder thing sounds better. And then two, you know, given the context when we tend to reach for these, it's doing this boost that this other one is not doing. So that is very, very interesting. Can I freeze this? I'm gonna bypass this. I'm just kind of checking that I understand how this plugin's working. Oh, let me switch back. So I unfroze that. Now I have to freeze this one, I believe. Yeah, okay. Now I unbypass that one. So there it is. Yeah, two very different curves. That's really interesting. And that's just running based off of some noise that's being sent through these. So yeah, this is really interesting. I could probably keep going and trying out different plugins with this plugin and exploring how to use this plugin better because it seems like there are some more settings that I could dig into. I'm gonna do that another day, I think. If you have any suggestions, if you're familiar with using this plugin and you have any suggestions for me on how to use it, how to improve my understanding of it, please, please, please put them in the comments below. We're all learning and growing together here on this channel. So so yeah, drop your thoughts in the comments below and I will be linking to this plugin in the description below, like I mentioned before. I hope someone finds this interesting. I hope some of you enjoy this as much as I did. And as always, please check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Cato Noise. We have additional content for my Patreon patrons. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're doing a book club on the Discord server. It's a lot of fun. So please feel free to check that out. If you feel so inclined, it does help keep my channel independent and nerdy and educational. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Very interesting. But yeah, this is really interesting. So that was really interesting, but it is interesting how it's a uh, interesting. Ah, that's interesting. This is interesting. That's interesting. This is very interesting. <laughs>